This video is going to show a pressure volume diagram and discuss an ideal gas system that undergoes four processes uh, coming back to the starting uh, condition. So we're initially at 2 times 10 to the fourth pascals is the true pressure, not the gauge pressure. We have an initial volume of 0.61 cubic meters. First step is an isothermal process compressing the ideal gas down to 0.52 cubic meters. Then an adiabatic process, that means Q equals zero. Uh, the gas is further compressed to 0.46 cubic meters. Then the third process is isothermal and the gas is expanding. Almost didn't catch that uh, typo. Gas is expanding back to 0.58 cubic meters. And lastly, adiabatic expansion back to 0.61 cubic meters, back to our starting point. We want the work for each path, and we want the net work. So we start by making a diagram, kind of ignore the work on the right side uh, just for a second here. But uh, our diagram, pressure and volume, pressure on the vertical scale, and these are 10 to the fourth uh, marks on the vertical scale, four times 10 to the fourth at the top. The volume scale is in cubic meters, uh, 0 0.45, 0 0 0.5, 0 0.55, 0 0.6. We're starting at point A, then the first process goes to point B, the second process to C, the third to D, and then back to A. We would prefer to calculate the work with pressure times change in volume. What is the problem of using that formula for this uh, situation? The problem is the pressure is variable the pressure is variable. We do not have an isobaric horizontal path for any segment here. So we can't use work equals pressure times change in volume. What about on the adiabatic? Well, I'd, and I said earlier, Q is zero. There's no energy going into or out of the system. Perhaps it's well insulated. Perhaps the process occurs very fast, um, but the Q is zero. The first law of thermodynamics tells us that the change in the internal energy is equal to Q minus W. So with Q being zero, the change in internal energy is minus W. So that's how we'll proceed to come up with a work number because for an ideal gas, the change in internal energy is calculated with three halves N, R, and TF minus TI. The change in the temperature gives us the calculation means for the change in the internal energy. The isothermal has its own calculation. On the isotherm, we can calculate the work done with this um, calculation that involves the natural log. The work is number of moles, the gas constant, temperature in Kelvin, and the log of the quantity, final volume divided by initial volume. So let's start off on path one, isothermal. And the first thing I'd like to know about path one, what's the temperature at point A, which is in fact also the temperature at point B? If we're going to calculate the work on this isotherm, I need the value for the temperature. So we can use the ideal gas law. That's not uh, restricted to any type of path on the PV diagram. At any one point, there's a connection between the pressure, the volume, number of moles, the gas constant, and the temperature at any one point in the diagram. So <clears throat> we're going to use this to uh, solve for the temperature. So first I'm just substituting in the, the known quantities here. The pressure is 2 times 10 to the fourth uh, pascals. The volume is 0.61 cubic meters, 3.5 moles of material, 8.314 for the gas constant, and then temperature. So you should pause and calculate with uh, your own calculator and see if you get the result that I came up with. My temperature result is 419 Kelvin. If you subtract 273, then you can get the Celsius number, 146, but 419 Kelvin. Then the work calculation is uh, ready. Number of moles, gas constant, temperature we just found. The final volume is 0.52. The initial volume is 0.61. So I put these numbers in my calculator, do that division, activate your natural log function on your calculator, and then multiply by the other factors. I came up with minus 
1,946 joules minus 1,946 joules. Why is it a negative? The volume decreased. When the volume decreased, work was done on the gas instead of the gas doing work. When work is done on the gas, we treat that as a negative quantity. When the volume decreases, work will be a negative. Um, what about the pressure at point B? Suppose we wanted to know that. Well, we'd use the ideal gas law. and won't spend much time on that, but uh, moles, gas constant, the temperature on the isotherm is 419 Kelvin. You must use Kelvin in the uh, ideal gas law. 0.52 for the new volume, and we get a, a pressure there. So that's using PV equals NRT. Let's go on to path two. Path two is adiabatic. And for path two, I'll see if I can arrange these pieces here so you can see the graph just a little bit. We won't be able to see this calculation very long as I go down the page, but at least you'll be able to do it here for this adiabatic. So we have path two, Q is zero. So the work will be negative of delta U. We can find delta U with three halves NR and the change in temperatures, T final minus T initial. The T uh, at point C is 535 kelvins. I didn't give you that in the uh, text there, but I'm giving it to you now. At point C, the temperature on that isotherm is 535 kelvins. Is it reasonable that that temperature is larger than the 419 kelvin we had on path one? Yes. When you go higher vertically upward on the pressure volume diagram at a constant uh, volume, <coughs> the way we get to higher pressure is to have higher temperature. So it's reasonable. And this is just a number that I chose as I invented this problem. So 535 Kelvin or so that isotherm. We have the numbers we need. So 3 halves, 3.5, 8.314. 535 is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. I came up with a delta U of 5.063 times 10 to the third joules. That's not the work. The work is negative 5.063 times 10 to the third joules. Again, we're compressing the gas. It's going to a smaller volume, so that work has to be a negative number. And if I want to know the pressure at point C, use the ideal gas law and you come up with uh, 3.384 times 10 to the fourth pascals. Okay, let's go on to path three. Another isotherm, but now we're expanding. And on this isotherm, again, constant number of moles, the system is sealed. So the number of moles is constant. The gas constant. On this isotherm, we have 535 Kelvin. The log of the final volume specified for this path three is 0.58 cubic meters, and we started at 0.46 cubic meters for path number three, giving us a work of 3,609 joules. And if we want to calculate the pressure at point D, use the ideal gas law. And I calculate these just to, as kind of a check, that we get the same type of progression of the uh, pressures that I showed on my, my chart. See if we're going off in any way. The last uh, segment is adiabatic. Again, the work is minus delta U. And we have the uh, numbers we need to calculate the adiabatic work done, the change in the energy, the delta U, and then the negative of that becomes the work. So I have uh, 5,063 joules Hmm, have I seen that number before? 5,063 joules? And yes, it wasn't as far back as I thought. On path two, uh, why is it that one is negative 5.063 and a 10 to the third, and the other is positive 5.063 times 10 to the third? We have these two paths here, adiabatic paths. And the formula for the adiabatic paths is just the difference in temperature. In path two, it was 535 minus 419. On path four, it's 419 minus 535. So 
we should expect the same magnitude numbers just with opposite signs. When we calculate the net work, we add up the work for each path, this positive 3609 dominates over the negative 1946. We end up with a positive work for the system. Um, so 1,663 joules. And as a quick check, I did, this is very approximate, but uh, create a rectangle on the pressure volume diagram. I chose to use a pressure of 2.1 times 10 to the fourth to 3.2 times 10 to the fourth. Those would be the boundaries of my rectangle and a change in volume of 0.11 cubic meters. When I do that, I get 1210 joules as the area enclosed, which is kind of in the ballpark of that. It's not meant to be a perfect calculation. It's tough to make a rectangle out of this shape, uh, but I just guessed at some numbers that would kind of give me a rectangle and it tells me I, at least I haven't made a power of 10 error. Um, I'm reasonably close to my, my uh, more accurate result that's uh, showing up there. So there we go, pressure volume diagram with isothermal and adiabatic paths. If you'd like more physics and astronomy videos, YouTube videos are listed at these two websites. This, this is free, there's no registration, um, but you'll see lists of videos and a description of how long they are and what they're either a short lecture on or a calculation and example. If you do uh, like these YouTube videos, please subscribe to my channel and keep practicing and ask your instructor questions.